And so if you guys have seen The Flash, uh, the early seasons of The Flash, Wentworth Miller played Captain Cold. He was also the star of the show Prison Break. Prison Break was kind of one of the best parts of peak television in like the mid-2000s on, on Fox. Uh, he has an article. We have an article here where he talks about how uh, he's done playing straight roles and his actual phrase is the straight man's story has been told. There's Ooh. no more so stories obnoxious. for straight. It's so obnoxious. That but is, so that phrase is something that James Lindsay had mentioned. I don't know if you guys, this yeah. is probably a little, yep. a little, a little off topic for, for pop culture cri uh, crisis, but like when you're saying that story has been told, you're literally disregarding every single person that that qualifies it because they don't see people as individuals they yeah. see people as groups exactly. i'd like to know what these what the straight male story is yeah well like and why what, is it why is everyone the same why is every straight male story the same well according to him it's they they're born with a lot of money and life is easy and then they die rich Oh, That's okay. essentially what it is. Yeah. It's like, oh, everything's good for you. If you're a straight you. man, you just walk into a room and everyone just starts bowing before yep. you and kissing the ground. Yeah, it happens you walk all the time. On. I That's walk into kind of how that works. You know, it's it's just everybody's you know kissing you and throwing money at you and that's that's what happens by being straight and, and <laughs> so he talks he talks a lot about how that uh because he played straight roles that he was not always open and uh you know open out and proud as a gay man and he says uh he says although the actor discussed his fee uh, his father being in his life he said that he never had an example of how to be a man but his prison prison break brothers uh called him calls him a thoughtful gentleman he's talking about dominic purcell and the number one thing that i took away from all of this was is that he conflates having his own depression, mental health concerns, and he puts it on to the fact that he was portraying a straight person and not real, not, not really giving credence to the fact that what you're do is act, doing is acting, that it's important to understand that he felt like he was, in, at that time, when he wasn't out and proud, that he was living a lie and that the acting that he was doing was purveying that lie further, was pushing that lie further, which led to mental health concerns. What? Surge is in the chat and he can confirm that... Uh that straight white men get money thrown at them all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Oh, okay. Oh, what's up, Serge? Thanks for pointing that out, He's, Serge. Appreciate thanks, it. Thank you for corroborating that story. Yeah. So he says, part of rejecting straight characters in film and television atta is attached to Miller's mental health. The 43-year-old actor awakened to a picture uh, of himself overweight uh, juxtaposed with a previous version of him looking slender on social media, meaning when he was in his prime, when he was doing the show, uh, when, when he was doing that show. He says, in 2010, I was sem semi-retired from acting. I was keeping a low profile for several reasons. First and foremost, I was, uh, should we say the word? He was um, thinking of Minecrafting himself. I don't want to say the other word for... for unalive. Now. Yeah, unalive himself. Uh, ashamed and in pain, I considered myself damaged goods, and the voices in my, in my head urged me to go down a path to self-destruction. None of that Whoa. is tied to the fact that you're pay playing a straight character. You're just Such a misappropriation. You're just struggling. And there's... It, struggle is... Someone's got to be to blame for his... Yeah, like, it's like... And here's the problem. They're, they're conflating the two, and it's very, very dangerous to do that when you're saying that that's a reason to not tell another person's story. These stories ruin my capacity for empathy. Yeah. Because I don't feel bad for him. I'm I don't. I don't believe that it's all that like he's had this massively terrible life. I don't believe it. Yeah. Like we live in a generally awesome time in one of the yeah. best countries to live in in the world. Like we have all like the all of society does everything they can to support and and uplift uh, LGBT people like right. it's all I'm, over the place all the time. There's all like you know, it's if you stop. I want to yeah, read you the constant. So this guy t saying that oh, he's he's got this depression. The depression has nothing to do with the stuff yeah. that he's talking about. It's because of his life. It's not his him being gay or, his, or or society. It's just that you're not happy with your life because you're unfulfilled. Go find something that fulfills you and stop whining. I want to talk about the like the, how the boldface lie. There's an extremely amazing boldface lie in this article helps kind of make it worse for himself. So this is from the uh, from Movie Web. It says, In Hollywood, where they snub black actors for many desired parts, being underpaid if they get them at all, and sparse scripts for the LGBTQ community get more, get more scanty, this is a bold stance for Miller. It's literally the opposite of a bold stance. This would be the most 
mainstream of any stance I could possibly think of now. 90% of the things you read from these websites are all fluff pieces based around identity politics. So it, it almost really... seems like he resents the people who liked the character he played simply yes. because it is yeah. a straight white male. He even, in this uh, little address to his female fans yep. who were, you know, attracted to him in his character, but not who he is in real life. He said, uh, if you're hot and bothered because you fell in love with a fictional straight man played by a real gay one, that's your work. He's losing. That's your problem. It's just an odd thing. Like, it's not that deep. No. You know, like people liking a character you played should be a compliment to you and your work and not an insult to who you are in real life. Right. But that's because they, they don't, they're starting to blur the lines. How often do we talk about when they hire people for these roles, they hire them because of how closely they fit to the to what the role a ever actually is. Only a gay person can play a gay character. Only uh, a trans person can play. Remember, uh, Scarlett Johansson can't play a trans character because she's not trans. So they want to cast as closely to that character as possible, ignoring the fact that it's actually Acting. Even Tom uh, Tom Hanks recently said, uh, he's like, I don't think straight people should be playing gay characters anymore. And then a bunch of gay actors came out and said, that's stupid. You're dumb for saying that. Like they, they understand that you're acting, that that's not your... It's a job. It's a job. It's a job. So I think part of it is like his worlds are blending together because he's not, re he doesn't understand how to when he's dealing with personal issues, he's letting the personal issues bleed through into the professional because he doesn't know how to separate the two anymore. Right. I think there's a similar disconnect when it comes to actors and actresses playing a different age than they are really? in real life. Like um, older or younger? I, I think that there should actually be some pushback to grown adults playing children, like really? teenagers, because... Up to a it, certain point? I mean, maybe up to a certain point. Movies, I know we're that all there's in the 30s. practicality factor where, like, there are legalities involved in hiring they have to be underage over actors. Yeah. But um, I mean, only because they they can't film for as long of hours as as adults can. Yep. But um, just knowing the way Hollywood is and the fact that they're all a bunch of sex yep. perverts, I <laughs> would rather they not portray underage characters on screen engaging in sexual acts for right. adults to watch played by adults like that is uh, I, I i think that that's unacceptable when it comes to someone's sexual orientation that's a different story uh because i think your age is more salient to yeah. your identity and your life experience than who you are attracted to. I guess just it also there's a foundation to be built that if, you, if you've got a good head on your shoulders, you can play a lot of different type of characters. Like I'm imagining he talks earlier in this article about how like he had issues going far back, well before he was an actor to when he was a teenager. So it has nothing to do with the acting. It has to do with just general mental Damn. health concerns. Yeah. And that's a problem going forward in Hollywood. It would be interesting, Mary, to see how that would shake out with people. Like you said, we talk about uh, the actress from... House of the Dragon, who they hired her at 17 so because uh, they wanted her to do nude scenes knowing that she wouldn't be able to start the character until she was 18 because Hollywood is such a mess right now. But I think about like in the 80s when all of the actors who played teenagers were literally in their 30s and had like full beards and everything were like that. Were they though? Because Kind of. <laughs> what about, um, who was it? Uh, something, uh, Brooke something? Brooke Shields? Yeah, it was yeah. like on the cover of something at like 15 and it was I really mean, as young as 11, she was being shown right. like fully. The men were usually older. Like uh, the men were older playing teenagers, it felt like. Like 21 Jump Street yeah. had kids that were people that were like in their 20s and pushing late 20s, pushing 30 yeah. uh, playing. You know, they, yeah, yeah. They were I young mean, looking. And some people but they just were, pull it and, off. You know, they just were, like, yeah, 13 Reasons Why does the same thing. They were supposed to be kids, but I mean... I I understand what you're saying, and I think that there's value in it. I don't know how it works in practice, though. Like, I get that if you have adults playing children, playing young people, uh, putting them into it's probably, but it's probably better to have adults playing children and having adults. Uh, 
No, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, the way it works practically is that you just don't write scenes where children are engaging in sexual yeah. acts. Yeah. Back but in the they day, won't stop doing that. Yeah. If we're right. talking like back in the day with shows like One Tree Hill or uh, all of the teen shows, the, it was like the, those topics were broached, but it's not like they were showing you graphic yeah. scenes of it happening. It was understood that kids did this stuff, but it was not shown to the people to and then watch. You, then you fast forward and we're at like cuties territory. Yeah, yeah like you look at where we're at now and, you, and you've got that going on or even uh, euphoria where it's adults playing kids and they're very graphic and, and they're not ignoring it at all and they're yeah. and they're and they're willing to show it to you and there's a there's a boundary that's been crossed there it's like our brain mm -hmm. like you know society's uh brains have been like the the wires have been crossed and they're struggling to understand that what they're watching probably isn't good for them yeah and i'm even like suspicious of that director sam levinson anyway because he casted one of the actresses through like finding her through porn yeah like she oh. started in porn and he casted her through that yep and i didn't know anyone went from porn to acting no that's it these does. days and, I, mean, um, yeah. I mean is there any difference anyways but like the a lot of it is like i mean hollywood has a long history of hiring women from that industry to play extras in in scenes that involve nudity and things like that just because they're comfortable on screen doing mm -hmm. that type of stuff one but, thing that's wild about this story with wentworth miller though is him like refusing to do the love scenes with his love interest to his female in the show yeah. like then you're what? just not good at your job yeah right that's like, prima donna behavior i've honestly. told you the, the story oh, exhausting there, there's an actor named manny montana um he did a show called graceland and, and there was a, a big theme for a couple of years in hollywood where the, every actor thought they were going to get their big break by being a straight person portraying a gay character before that was like an in thing and what they would do on that show is they would tell them like what's a big thing that you want your character to do this year they would ask the actors like what do you want your character to and accomplish this says, year come out and this guy no he goes he goes i want my character to kiss a dude and, I, and I'm just like, why? Like, like I mean, like if it makes like sense, maybe you just want to kiss. Like, a like dude. well, like maybe like, <laughs> if, if you want, if like if it makes sense for the story, like if the, if if his character was already going in that direction, in I can understand 90s, that. Nineties, that would have made sense. Yeah, in the nineties. Yeah, it's twenty twenty three. Yeah. Like, dude. People have seen men kissing on TV for 25, 30 yeah. years. You are not. It's like when when women. Like when they say, oh, the first woman to do blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, wait a minute. They've been doing that since like, you know, for 30 years. The first, like uh, the, I forget what her name was. Uh, the, the girl that played Katniss in, in the Hunger Games had Jennifer made that. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence made that stupid remark about <laughs> I'm the first, the first female, female, female. And it's female. like, okay, that is mind numbingly stupid. Mind numbing. Yeah, that but that's what so they far. want. They, people that are in this, that are, that have been, have been, you know, submerged in this, in this woke stuff the, the woke mind virus or whatever you want to call it um they all want to be pioneers yes defying the man but the problem is you're too effing late yeah all that stuff's already been defied yeah. you know, like, they also are the system and the yeah. man that they claim to oppose it's the lamest thing ever it it's is the it's not only is it lame because it's it's not dangerous it's lame because someone's already done it when it was dangerous yeah so it's like, you're LARPing this this thing and it's not real. Mm -hmm. The comic book industry is still doing that with like yeah. uh, like like with the writers and everything like that. And it's like it's stunning and brave, but it was stunning and brave in like the eighties. Yeah, when was the when did Caitlyn Jenner come out as trans? In the twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen? Was it that far back? Yeah, it was around yeah, something it was around like that. Then. Like uh, she it was a like show and everything. But you're the coming out and then the yeah. I am Caitlyn yeah. cover story. Yeah, they get, love the idea of, like that, of being trailblazers newly. and pioneers for things that have already been done before. Yeah, they want to be trailblazers and pioneers, but the problem is they're born too late yeah. because liberal society has basically uh, accepted all the things that they yeah. think that the liberal that they want the, to say liberal society has not accepted. They, they, liberal society has already said we're fine with it. You're just being annoying. Yeah, me and me, me and Mary argue about this point sometimes. From like, uh, a, a, there's a whole generation of people who feel who feel like they got shortchanged because we we legalized gay marriage, and they're like, oh, what do we fight for now? So we have to make stuff up yeah. to, to be to be feel like you're pioneering. Well, it's even yeah. worse in acting, where it's like you're not actually doing anything, you're not actually changing anything, you're not actually making a difference with anyone. You just want to be given credit for that. Though for her, that story with with Jennifer Lawrence, I felt like I was surprised at how far and wide that one went. I always 
always felt that she was just like, she was phrasing it in a way, because it wasn't a written interview, it was like spoken, that I don't think she believed that for a second. I, I don't mm -hmm. think she's that dumb. I think that she said something. I hope you're right. And that in the per I want you to be and, right. And, and but what's phrasing her name? it that way just yeah. is a, such a tell. She, what that's how you feel. She's like, oh, they just they weren't hiring women for roles like that back then. What she means by that is like there weren't as many as there are now. She just phrased it poorly and then rightfully got dragged I mean, for it. Do we she's want annoying. less female action stars that yes. do kind of, well, yeah. and instead of more female action stars that do a shitty job? Because that's want, the situation we're in now. I want fewer and quality. Yes. Like that's, I said, that's what we had already. Whenever we know? do this, I pointed out whenever, whenever they talk about the strong, independent woman character, I'm like, I have a list of 30 shows, all <laughs> of which he has, always pulls out the list. has a strong, independent woman in each of those shows <laughs> and all of them. And I don't just have like shows. I have good shows, like shows that are actually worth watching. So it's like they still think like whenever you see like they're, tr they're, they're blazing trails, they're changing history. I'm like, this has been done. For 25 to 30 years, Joss, as awful as Joss Whedon is, Joss Whedon changed, did, did this stuff 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Buffy was a thing 20 or 30 years ago. Like, it's not 10 years ago. It's 20 years yeah. ago now. It's it's a long time. Yeah. Like, it's they, they don't understand that this has already been done because the media pretends that it hasn't. Right. To be a pioneer, you have to have an open mind, and these people all think the same way. Yeah. So you really can't ever break out of that if you don't have diversity of thought and then and that's when you get into the funny like the weird like they start making up like records they're like the first strong independent woman over the height of five foot seven yeah. on a thursday yeah. uh, <laughs> whose dad's name is mark and mom's name is caitlin they like, did that with they did that again this is this is politics so it's not really the same yeah. thing but they did that with rick rick Grinnell. rick Grinnell is a, a a gay man and he was the uh, ambassador to uh to germany and i think that he didn't take when he took office he wasn't sworn in or something because he took it when someone left or something i don't know what the deal was but he didn't go in front of the senate I, and that's normally what has to happen the the ambassador has to be sworn in so when when i believe it was buddha judge or someone else either way someone else got sworn in they were like oh the first blah 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 yeah. and it's like no grinnell was already the first oh yeah it's I remember just that. that yeah and they they do that because it was Grinnell was appointed by the wrong people yeah. by Trump. So and it's like you know whatever you think about Trump, it's like you're taking it away from an actual gay dude who's the actually the first person. So that way you can give it to the gay dude with the right politics. And, and they do that on purpose. They know yeah, that they it's do. not true. They, they just do. do it because it is crazy to me. Like the more that we do this, I realize that how much is just lying. Yes, it's, it's not misrepresenting. It's just like it's lying and taking advantage of the fact that people don't have the time to read thirty articles a day, so they just lie. It's only us that sit and read all of those articles <laughs> and call it out. Mm -hmm. And this, the, the big thing about this is it bums me out because Wentworth Miller is a great actor, and I love him in the in the in Prison Break and as Captain Cold. So it's funny to uh, he actually is a good actor because you wouldn't get any of that from his performance in these roles. The part about him not wanting to do like, can you imagine if like the like a straight actor was now just like, I didn't want to do the scene because it was just no, I don't want to do. Well, you that. just don't take the job. You just don't do the job, mm -hmm. right? So it is what it is. I just think that it's a sign of where we're going where 20 years ago uh, it felt like straight actor or gay actors would have to pretend to be straight to work in the industry now we have them pretending like you can't prove I'm not bi so they they say they have that's a big thing in the comic book industry I've never actually been with a with another woman I've never actually yeah. been with another guy but you can't prove that I haven't in all of the time I've yep. been alive that, therefore I'm part of this marginalized group so yeah. they have like a stunt gay guy come in to do the love scene or, like, or a Stunt straight guy. They 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 talk about it. You in need here. like a stunt man to do <laughs> scenes with women for you. They talk about it in here where they. Talk, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna read this last part. It says as a, as lead footed as the gay movement is, their plight is evolving. Ponder the world 20 years ago and consider all of the closeted politicians betraying wives, musicians humiliated in bathroom stalls, actors overwhelmed by Hollywood what? carpet beards, and teenagers who <laughs> perhaps weren't as fortunate as Miller. The By the time Freddie Mercury passed away, yeah. the music industry and people that were fans of music had embraced the fact that there were hom that homosexuality was real. They'd said we're not going to be bigoted towards homosexuals. That was and that was in the '90s when when Freddie Mercury passed yeah. away. And wasn't that a thing where he he regretted it because he said then it became all he was. Like I, they, they like he, he had like know. a quote from an interview. He's like he regretted telling people because then once he came out or as I don't as think that, he ever told people. I who, think who, who somebody is it that, who his am I best friend of? told. 
when he died. And said that when he came out that he regretted it because then it became the focal point of every interview and he didn't want know. it to be a part of the interviews. He's like, it's not important. It's not about the music. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I but like in the future, you're going to have like a, a guy will go on the red carpet with a, with a beard because it's going to be the other way. Now they won't have uh, gay actors pretending to be straight. It'll be straight actors pretending to be gay because it will be fashionable. Mm-hmm. It's going to go the other way. So. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.